Thousands of Americans at this hour are descending on Washington, D.C. for what's expected to be a massive women's march from the U.S. Capitol to the Capitol. Hundreds of thousands of women are marching today in cities across the country. Rallies Over 600 of these fight. marches in all, more than 2 million people expected to turn out. In the spirit of democracy, democracy and honoring the champions of human rights, dignity, dignity, and justice who have come before us, we, we join, join in diversity to show our presence in numbers too great to ignore. The Women's March on Washington will, will send, send a bold message to our new government on, on their, their first, first day, day in, in office. office. And to the world that women's rights are human, human rights. rights. We stand together, recognizing that defending the most marginalized amongst us is defending all, all of us. We support the advocacy and resistance movements that reflect our multiple and intersecting, intersecting identities. identities. We call on all defenders of human rights to join us. This, this march, march is the first step towards unifying our communities, grounded in new relationships, to create change from the grassroots level up. We will not rest until women have parity and equity at, at all, all levels, levels of leadership in society. We, we work, work peacefully, peacefully while recognizing there is no true peace without, without justice, justice and equality for all. Hear our, our voice. voice. Oh, I can follow directions. <laughs> it's happening. We just had a really successful call with maybe 100 women of color from different walks of life. As long as we keep on thinking about that, even the program, I was like, okay, we need indigenous folks. It just can't be black and white. We don't live in a binary world. Trump went after Mexicans. Muslims, undocumented people. I don't know what do um, We're going to do oops, sorry, a very brief um, sort of go round of who's who and what we're all doing since we're finally in the same place and most of us have never met each other before. My background is um, I left a large corporate executive job to spend the last 570 days working um, for Hillary Clinton at Hillary for America. So I was also a little bummed. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, my background is in uh, international law, and um, right now I'm a public defender, and I also do immigrant defense. So um, people who are immigrants and who are getting deported, we use international law to prevent their deportation. So obviously after the election, I was, yeah, I was, a lot of things. I was pissed, I was angry, I was like all over the place. I've organized um, a lot of marches and rallies, some as big as we think this one will be, um, although I think it could go bigger. Um, my name is Bob Bland and I am uh, one of the national co-chairs along with Carmen and Tamika and Linda and um, I was also one of the day one people are at the very beginning. I think one of the most transformative things about this march and the movement that is rising from it is that people who are not used to getting out of their comfort zones are now finally saying, okay, enough is enough. I had a nasty woman t-shirt go viral right after the third debate. It was uh, like instant community. We had over 3,000 people who had bought shirts or totes. On election night, we were all just so completely devastated. This was time to get out from behind our computers and actually do something. That was really how it snowballed all day, was just women from all over the country who had never met each other coming together uh, online. None of us knew how big it was gonna get. I mean, what Bob did um, in terms of organizing these masses of people who were um, inspired to come march is incredible. Um, not to mention that in the middle of this, she gave birth. <laughs> not to the movement. <laughs> no, not to the movement. I mean, literally. To a human. To, to the movement and. To a human baby. To a human baby. So. Tamika was there too. I was in the hospital yeah. with the contractions. Oh, yeah. And then we only knew each other for two days. <laughs> We were having a straight up business meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so I am Tamika Mallory. I am a civil rights activist. I've been working in the space of activism for almost 20 years of my life. My parents were two of Reverend Al Sharpton's first members when he started over 26 years ago. So I was literally the three-year-old girl in the protests 
organizing for me in this march, in this moment, is as much about like my survival, my family's survival, my friend's survival. My son's father was murdered when my son was two years old. In order to ensure his safety and protection, I know that I must get up every day concerned about the issues as it relates to particularly black men in this country. I come as an angry black woman at all times of my life, every day. This is the People who are sort of in. waking up post-Trump, it's completely fine because I feel like everyone has a point of entry. Everyone. So now that I see it, you know, how can this country look like this? But the truth is, it has always looked like this. My name is Linda Sarsour, and I came to you today from Brooklyn, New York, which is where I was born and raised. I'm a Palestinian a Muslim American. I'm a daughter of Palestinian immigrants who came here from Palestine in the 1970s um, from living under military occupation. I have been serving in my own community as a civil rights activist um, since the ashes of 9-11 um, as someone who comes from a very targeted community by all levels of law enforcement. And I come to this space also like Tamika uh, from a community that has si basically suffered in silence and none of our fellow Americans have stood up for us. It's a big morale booster for people in my community to see someone who looks like me um, be in a leadership position and to be in a public demonstration against this administration that says, actually this time around, we're not gonna suffer in silence. There are actually people who know what's going on and we're standing here together in these mass numbers telling you that we're not gonna back down and we're not gonna allow you to target our Muslim sisters and brothers, our black sisters and brothers, our Native American, our Latina, our undocumented. Uh, women have well, always been leaders in this thing. country. Just because we don't have the first woman president doesn't mean that there's no women leadership in this country. Maybe if we allow the women to lead once and for all in this visible way, maybe we will bring justice to our communities in a way that we haven't. I'm Carmen Perez, and so I've been in the, the world of criminal justice, movement building, civil rights, human rights uh, for the past 20 years. We're really angry at the fact that Trump came out with this very racist rhetoric, but that's just really the fabric of America, right? And so how do we attack the forces of evil and not people doing evil? Because this is really beyond Trump. This is not about Democrats versus Republicans. This is about building our communities back up. We're all in the headquarters. Uh, we're all working 24 seven now. It's 17 days before the march and uh, we're all working tirelessly on logistics. This administration cannot ignore hundreds of thousands of people. This is going to be the largest mass mobilization that any new administration has ever seen on their first day. You know, we all want big numbers, but as we get bigger, we need more porta potties to make sure that people are comfortable and that we have the right accommodations and security has clearly been a major concern. Insurance can range anywhere from 30 to 40,000 for the uh, amount of people that we will have at the march. Uh, so, so uh, I really welcome folks, um, you know, with whatever size donations you have, whether it be small donations on CrowdRise, you know, $50, $100, $500. We are not yet at our goal. My experience of organizing this march um, has been, you know, when we were continuously asked questions about where the permit was. Permit, 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 permit. And no one went, wanted to have a deep conversation about why we were marching. Who are we? And I wondered, did anyone ever ask, uh, you know, a group of men who were organizing a march the same questions that they were asking us? Women are carrying the weight of the community on our backs. And so we're going to Washington talking about the entire community, bringing the issues of the entire family with us um, and asking men and children to join us there. The intentionality of saying it's the Women's March on Washington is that this is a women-led movement. And you have to be comfortable in your own skin as a man in this country to say, yes, I will be led by women. We're also intentional about what kind of women are leading this Women's March on Washington. History is going to record this thing one way or the other. Mm -hmm. That's right. And it will say, in 2017, there was another white woman march. Right. There was some black folks sprinkled there, but the black women still mm -hmm. did not feel that they should be a part oh, of. That it was their place. And I and that that can't happen to me, right? Because this is I, I might as well go home. We're on the fifth week and we're just beginning to bring on like indigenous women from, you know, five different reservations. I, I feel like the team that we have is dynamic. And I'm just trying to figure out what are people doing in case we could fill some of the gaps. There cannot be a convening That's in this nation that seeks to address the issues of women 
where women of color are not sitting in the front seat leading the conversation because we come from the most impacted and the most marginalized communities. What we're doing here is we are creating another opportunity to talk about what are the issues that impact women. Yes, pay equity impacts all women, but guess what? Guess who pay, gets paid less than white women? Women of color do. We can't have a conversation about feminism that doesn't include uh, race, that doesn't include socioeconomic status, that doesn't, doesn't include immigration status, that doesn't, doesn't include respecting people's religious rights and religious freedom in this country. And maybe this march is a way for us to put that out there. I'm just gonna throw it out there. I think what stops white women from acknowledging their privilege too often is fear, is the fear of acknowledging that we've had a leg up and that we have to do the work. The march itself is a platform for conversations that, at least from my perspective, were not being had previously, um, you know, and, and my perspective is one of somebody who was not previously an activist and organizer. And so uh, thank you so much to Tamika and Linda and Carmen for uh, joining as leaders. Okay, we'll see you here. Okay, all right, bye. building has always been about intersectionality. When people see a light-skinned Palestinian girl talking about Black Lives Matter, they look at me like I'm crazy. A third of my community is black too. Do we care just about reproductive rights? Like, if you're a Mexican woman that's about to get deported to Mexico, how important are your reproductive rights at this moment? Being able to not prioritize what women should care about, but believing that we live intersectional lives. A politician sits in an ivory office somewhere on Capitol Hill when I can sit in the streets, you know, I can sit in a coffee shop, I can sit in a community center, I can sit in a mosque, I can sit in a church, I can touch people directly who are impacted by the very issues that I fight for every day. I want to give a special shout out, I don't know if she's here, to Megan Abaludo, a mom who heard about the Women's March on Washington and she said, I want to do something. So she organized and she's organizing Bay Ridge to go to the Women's March on Washington. It didn't require an elected official or someone in a high level position. It took a woman with conviction and a passion and outrage to say, I'm taking my people and we're going down to Washington, D.C. We have to decide the actual front of the line and then we have to decide who those 150 people are because those people are going to be transported to the front of the march by a bus. Can we do very specific? It's really, there's some people that have to be in the front of the line, right? So let's just do the half to Right. And it's so yeah, the that's speakers for sure. The right. national yeah. team for sure. Thank you, everyone. We're asking organizers to arrive beginning at 3 a.m. Say one more time. So 3 a.m. Everyone. 3 a.m. You also have tear down from inauguration. So that's going to be simultaneous. Building up, tearing down. What's that? That's symbolic. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Um, so 10 to 1 is the program. We'll get into that in a little bit. At 1.15, I have no idea how many people are going to be there. A lot. We, right now, we've communicated our growing numbers to the city agencies. They know about them. Um, there's not a lot of real estate. Even if we don't march, but we have bodies along that whole route, we have not, that plan has never changed, and we have gotten that accomplished. If we are unable to march because we have so many people, it's amazing, it's incredible, we'll, we'll make that, that 
that call in that moment, but what do we tell people? So we should, we'll, we'll have to think a little bit more in these next few hours because yeah, tomorrow we'll be not. here in a few hours. We'll, we'll have to think about that. that. Why can't we just march? We might not be able to organize it the way we want to organize it. Well, why, how do we just stop we don't, people from marching? Why we don't we? necessarily stop people from marching. Okay, I'm, this is important. This is not an opportunity for civil disobedience. That is not what this is. Today, if you weren't tracking, yes. there were riots that have yeah. naturally raised tensions of law enforcement. Yeah. So just to, just to kind of keep that in mind. This is Noelle. She is the director of operations for Global. She is our Vanessa. Um, and she is going to announce what is happening in this moment. You guys, it is already January 21st in some parts of the world. And New Zealand is starting to march right now. So what I tell people all the time is that don't be offended when people are raising their voices against injustice in the United States of America. This is why we live here. This is why we live in the land of freedom and democracy. If anything, those who are raising their voices are engaging in freedom and democracy. And I tell people all the time, dissent is the highest form of patriotism. I'm, it's going to roll better if I do it that way. We will not remember, we will, well, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence. So in this moment, what I see as being something that is extremely powerful is opportunity, but it is only opportunity. Because until January 22nd comes and we see people continue to do the work, it means nothing. Ultimately, I feel like this has profoundly benefited me to go through this experience, and I look forward to sharing it with my children. I look forward to it to be the beginning of a lifelong learning. If we can activate and mobilize hundreds of thousands of people who previously would have just you know, been behind a screen, then that might make the difference. country that is free, free from fear, discrimination, free from being told what we can do with our bodies. We're fighting for the right to be fully present and to be our whole selves. <laughs> 